Hello everyone, I've created this video to talk about a certain AP course, that is the AP Computer Science Principles course, or the AP CSP course, and I'm going to be talking about how you get a 5 out of 5 on this course, and you might think that that seems daunting, you might think that that's really hard, but the truth be told, it isn't. All you need to have is some knowledge about technology, you need to know at least one programming language, even something as simple and easy as Scratch could work, and you need to be able to prepare for 30 to 40 hours. And if you can do that, you can, fit a, you can get a full score fairly easily. And I want you all to get a 5 out of 5, because the test is relatively easy. I'll start by telling you a little about myself. So my name is Om Desai, and I'm a freshman in... And last year, when I was in 8th grade, I took the test, and I got a full score out of it. And I didn't take a high school class, I self-studied for it, and I still did well on it. So this is the first of a six-part series, which will deal with how you get a full score on the test. And this part we'll be talking about what we'll be covering over the next few videos. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to start going through what we're going to do in each video. And we're going to begin in part two. And we're going to start part two by explaining what this video series will not cover. So we're not going to exactly teach you anything about the subject. We're presuming that you're already studying the subject because you're watching this video. So this video is more about the strategy of getting a 5, not a 3 or a 4. After that, I'm going to talk about why I chose to take this exam in my 8th grade. And to simply put it, that was because this exam was a challenge that I wanted to overcome. But to be honest, it wasn't that hard in the end. Then, we're going to talk about the advantages of taking an AP exam, and more specifically, the advantages of taking the AP CSP exam. Once we're done with that, we're going to talk about the parts of the College Board website where you can find the rubric and you can find the submission guidelines. Finally, we're going to talk about how you can register for the exam if you're self-studying. If you're enrolled in a high school class with a teacher, then your teacher probably got this one covered. Now that we've talked about part two, we can start by talking about what I'm going to explain part three. So there are three parts of the exam, the explore task, the create task, and the written exam. And we're going to go over those, those three parts, and then we're going to explain the steps you need to take to submit the two tasks. That means the explore task and the create task. Once I've showed you that, I can then talk about the steps you can take to prepare yourself most effectively for the written exam. After that, I'm going to talk about what exactly you need to worry about to get a score of 5 instead of a 3 or a 4. Finally, we're going to look at the rubric, and we're going to go through the rubric and talk about what it says and what exactly you should focus on. Now that I've gone over what I'll do in part 2 and what I'll do in part 3, I can show you what I'm going to do in part 4. And in part 4, I'm going to talk about what I did for the Explore task submission and why I chose the particular topic for that project that I did. That is the topic of no cashier stores. And I'm also going to talk about how I managed to exactly integrate all the requirements from the rubric into my project. Then, in part 5, I'm going to do the same, but for the create task, I'm going to talk about what I did for the create task and why I chose the topic that I did. Again, I'm going to talk about how I managed to exactly integrate the requirements from the rubric into the create task. Moving forwards, I'm going to talk about what we're going to cover once I reach part 6. And I'm going to explain how I prepared for the written exam and how I studied for it. And I'm going to show you some of the material that I used to study. I'm also going to provide some links and references that helped me study for the multiple choice exam, and that will probably help you. Most of them are free, 
but some of them are available for a reasonable cost if you want them. There will not necessarily be a part 7, but if I receive any questions, or if there are any new information that comes up that I feel should be addressed, then I'll make a part 7. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel so that you can receive new informative videos and that you can receive more videos from this series. Goodbye.